Okay, I'm back. Literally have five minutes. Um, if you follow my stories, you see every week I go to my doctor and I get a IV. Today is a high dose vitamin C IV, 35 grams. <laughs> Uh, normally people would take one to three thousand milligrams per day which is equal to one to three grams um, but yeah I do high dose vitamin C IVs every other week um, right now I alternate with ozone IV and I am doing this for eight weeks so it's going well um, anyway here's the video you missed earlier today um, let's see here we go keep getting all these notifications <laughs> um, so earlier today I was making a video sharing with you some of my health journey and issues um, basically I've been pretty sick with a weird chronic illness for a few years no energy lots of digestive problems and right upper quadrant pain they took out my gallbladder that didn't fix anything still had lots of pain I and I mean lots of pain bad pain and last year I was also losing weight, so I'm five foot ten, and I was down to a hundred and fifteen pounds. I was so sick and miserable, and the pain would lead to nausea, which would lead to lack of appetite. So I learned a great deal about medical marijuana, and how incredible that is for um, that type of problems that I was dealing with, which we don't still specifically know, but we do know it's uh, many things because I've also now done gene testing and discovered I have multiple genetic defects. One of them being the MTHFR defect, another one being COMT, another one being HLADR, and another one which, um, well, there's three others that are all related to detoxing. Um, so basically what happens is my body does not um, remove biotoxins like most people. So insect bites, um, mold exposure, fungus, parasites, uh, all of these things build up in my body instead of my body fighting it off like most people. Now, if you know anyone dealing with some kind of random illness that they are not getting over, maybe they're being treated as fibromyalgia or uh, chronic migraines or chronic fatigue syndrome, um, I might be able to point them in the right direction for how to figure out what it is because now I have spent a lot of time with um, root cause illness and root cause doctors, functional medicine practitioners, and really getting to the root cause of what is causing illnesses. Because Western medicine, I'm sorry if you're in Western medicine and I can speak from personal experience because my husband's a PA, my dad's a doctor, my aunts and uncles are all nurses, doctors, I mean so many medical people in my family and um, they don't really address the root cause in a lot of situations with chronic illness. Uh, they're great with acute problems but they struggle with chronic. Have any of you experienced that? I'm really making this video right now about my health journey and then I wanted some to, um, ideas from you guys because I get people asking me questions constantly about how do I treat parasites, where do I buy ivermectin and fenbendazole and uh, where do which tests should I order. So my idea is I need to create some kind of group. I'm not sure if it should be a Facebook group, that's where you guys are, or if it should be maybe a telegram group where it's kind of like a chat where I can share information. I'm just not sure what our best method is because let's be honest here, a lot of the things that I'm doing, the FDA says no, bad, <laughs> like no. But here's what I've learned and I hate to be sounding so pessimistic, but I really have started to believe that what we're dealing with here is a medical cartel when it comes to Western medicine and big pharma and the fact that they are hiding low cost effective treatments from the public. It's so infuriating. I'm just really pissed about it all. And I know that there are some of you watching this right now, you've been dealing with your own um, wellness struggles, illness struggles, however you wanna phrase it, and not finding your answers. And I have ideas that could help you. I don't know how to get the word out. That's my problem. So can you let me know? Yes, I know about hypothyroidism because that's what I have. And, or should I say had. 
because my doctor wanted to put me on medication for it, but then she said, as we address the root cause, your body will rebalance and you won't need thyroid meds. She gave me the option to take the prescription. I chose not to. And instead, I researched iodine, I researched killing parasites, and I found my answers there. So um, I think that maybe I could help you. I don't want to like be responsible for you though. And I get a little nervous because I don't know about like, what is the word? Liability? <laughs> but you're not paying me. I, I don't want anyone to pay me. Um, I just want to share information. And I don't even know if that makes me liable if I'm sharing the info. I don't know. But I'll be honest, I've taken veterinary meds. I've ordered meds from India. I've gotten them from Mexico. The problem is that our FDA has really done a number on um, the parasitic medications and the parasite narrative in general. Um, Christy, it ties into the fungus and mold. Yes, I have that too. I have all of these things. This is what I've learned, that our medical cartel has blocked this information from our citizens. I've lived in developing countries. I know how easy it is to walk into a, quote, drugstore in these developing countries and pay 50 cents for a parasite medication that I absolutely could not get prescribed here and had to use horse dewormer, okay? And guess what? Parasites came out as a result. I don't regret it. <laughs> yeah, so here's the thing. You guys, there is a direct connection between um, thyroid problems and parasites. And I've seen it again and again and again because now I've been in the world of killing parasites and have seen and read um, and known lots of people with thyroid problems who then kill parasites and then uh, rebalance their body and things correct themselves. So my personal opinion is we are surrounded by toxins in our environment, the things we put on our skin, the products you clean your house with, the um, products you use to clean your clothes, right? If you use scented candles or any fake fragrances or toxic chemicals. Did you guys know that you can actually clean your house for like $2, $3 a month? You don't need to buy all those toxic cleaning chemicals. Please stop it. <laughs> Did you also know that you can rebalance your thyroid with certain supplements for pennies on the dollar? I'm telling you. Yes, how many women are dealing with hypothyroidism? I mean, come on. And are you being told that you need to be on these meds for a lifetime? Like, think about it. Your thyroid started to struggle for a reason. There is a reason. It could be related to some genetic defects. It could be related to the toxins in your environment. It could be the fact that you are exposed to toxins and heavy metals and they start to build up in your body. You have genetic defects. You're not clearing things properly and now you become successful susceptible to multiple things. Oh my gosh, look at you guys. I didn't know that I had this many friends that had this issue. Whoa, this is the worst. John, oh my gosh, you know flukes. Yes, I have flukes. They're horrible. I can't seem to get rid of them. Angie, you're going to love this. You have horses. You need to know about it. <laughs> I swear I got my parasites from my horses, even though we had them on a regular warming schedule. But I didn't know that I needed to pulse the meds and I needed to do it on the full moon. I needed to do different meds because here's the other problem with parasites. This wasn't intended to become a parasite talk, but let's just go there. Okay. And I only have a few minutes because I got to get to my IV appointment, but... Um, okay, there's just so much I need to cover with you guys. Oh my gosh. Um, okay, so Lynn's saying, is it mold? Yes, mold, the thing with mold, you guys, is we are exposed to mold everywhere. 25% of the population has a genetic defect which predisposes them to mold building up in their body unlike the rest of the population because you don't build up the antibodies and then clear them like everyone else does, okay? The problem with mold is, is it lowers your immune system. The other issue is now you become susceptible to Lyme and co-infections, also to parasites. Why? Because as the immune system function is lower, 
forward, your natural defenses aren't going to address the issue as easily as when you are a healthy, happy, uh, thriving person. <laughs> so the, back to the horses thing. Um, yes. And how many of you have animals, right? Um, I love it, Amanda. I didn't know we could get parasites. How do you know you have them? Well, I'll tell you how. I took the medication and I saw them come out in my stool for 10 days in a row. I couldn't even leave the house. It was horrendous. It was last year. I was so sick. I was already bedridden. I don't think this will happen to you. <laughs> um, you might have it easy like my husband. We, we treated him. It was just like the walk in the park. No big deal. But for people who have been dealing with chronic illness already, you've had maybe a low body temperature. That was me. My temperature was 97, 97.2. I would run a fever. I felt feverish. But then when they took my temp, it would be 98.2, 98.4. It was crazy. Amanda, I can't believe this. You are a Montana girl. You seriously didn't think we had parasites? Come on. See, this is the disservice that the Western medicine has done to our citizens. Um, they somehow believe that parasites stop at the border. I mean, come on. We have people crossing the border all the time. You think the parasites don't come in here too? You think the animals don't have parasites? How many of you guys are deworming your pets? Think about it. And you're being exposed to parasites everywhere you go, in the foods you eat, when you eat out at a uh, restaurant. If somebody doesn't wash their hands properly after they go to the restroom, the eggs are microscopic. Here's the problem. You kill parasites once, you might think, oh, I'm ahead of the game. But guess what? You are deworming your pets, your animals, regularly. And... Um, Oh my gosh, Amanda, I didn't either until I saw how many parasites came out after I took the horse dewormer. I did take it. <laughs> I know. Some of you are like, what in the world is she talking about? I am just trying to address I'm trying to address a secret epidemic. And here's the you guys, can I blow your mind for a minute? Do you know one of the medications that is a game changer for COVID? There's two actually. One is called hydroxychloroquine. Don't type these in the comments though, these names of these things, because I don't want Facebook to flag me. Um, hydroxychloroquine is an antiparasitic for malaria. Malaria is a blood-borne parasite carried by mosquitoes. Now, if you have Lyme and co-infections, you also probably have the parasites that come with it, and that's what I had, Babesia. It's a parasite that's microscopic and it lives within your blood cells, okay? So not only did I get sticky, slow-moving blood with blood clot in my left leg, but I also had the problem of um, when I tried to do my ozone IVs, my blood was so thick they couldn't even get the blood to come out to mix with the ozone to put back in. That's how they do these ozone IVs. That's an incredible experience. I should probably go live sometime. Next week I will and show you that. But essentially, the disservice that our Western medicine has done for people is parasites are a root cause for so many illnesses if they go unchecked. And thyroid problems is one of the main ones because it disrupts your hormones and it, and it disrupts your micronutrients like boron and iodine. And we already have boron and iodine deficient soils. And if you are consuming conventional products that get sprayed with Roundup, I'm just like, what is the name? <laughs> then what that does is it interrupts your calcium channels. <coughs> and when you disrupt certain ways that the body works, and if you understand how Roundup works on plants, what it does is it disrupts the calcium channels, and so the plants doesn't have the proper uptake of minerals to survive. Well, guess what? Then we consume these plants, and then they, we still get the residual effect on our own bodies, okay? Um, there's a friend, a PhD scientist that I follow out of, I think Massachusetts, Stephanie Seneff, and she teaches about glyphosate, which is round up all the time sharing stuff. So make sure you follow her, click see first. I'll link to her in the comments after the video, but I've learned a ton about glyphosate from her. In fact, I also have been against GMOs since they came out in the 90s, and I led the Moms Against Monsanto March in the early 2000s. Anyway, I have a long history in understanding and re researching these things, and I think it's about time I really start getting the word out there to you guys. So what do you say? Do we do a Facebook group, or do we do maybe a Telegram chat group? I don't know where we take this. 
I don't know if Facebook's gonna censor me and delete me off of this platform. I have a feeling eventually that could happen because I speak about things that are censored so greatly, including this health and wellness stuff. But I just have a passion for truth, whether it's your, your health, it's our environment, it's the food we eat, it's politics. You know what? We have to get to the truth of it all. So I don't even know what else to cover with you, <laughs> but I'm reading your comments right now. Every once in a while, people deworm and they will notice increased inflammation. Yes, you are right. When you do your deworming, you do have increased inflammation due to the die off. But to be honest, you also have inflammation because you have a parasite population. And I've read you all that 80% of Americans have parasites. Oh, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> um, yes, we need a human dewormer. Amanda, there is a human dewormer, but the issue is it is very difficult to get it from the doctors. And I know this because once I took, I said, I literally said, F it. And I took the horse dewormer last fall because I just thought, what could it hurt? And plus I'd been reading a lot of stories about it. I researched extensively about ivermectin. I had taken it when I'd traveled and lived in India. That was 20 years ago though. And um, then, like I said, so many parasites came out. It was like a mass exodus. It was disgusting. I cried a lot. And I was in a lot of pain from it because they don't make you feel good when they die. <laughs> they release a lot of toxins. But there are ways and um, things that you can do to address the die-off. And I have put together an extensive list of how to deal with the die-off symptoms. And here's the thing I want you to know before I keep rambling. Here's the thing. When, I wonder if I can turn off your comments. That would help so much. Okay, I did it. Um, here's the thing. When you are, uh oh, this is one of the symptoms, the problems I've dealt with a long time is the mental clarity and issues of losing my train of thought. Uh, hmm. <laughs> anyway, I was going to say, when you are, oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, so remember I told you that last fall I took the ivermectin? I actually wrote a blog about this. If you guys are really interested in my story, go to eliselaninger.com. You can type that in the comments for me, eliselaninger.com. Read my story. You might have to scroll back on the blog until last year, but here's the thing I want you to know. And this is the disservice that Western medicine does for um, our citizens. <sighs> I don't, I mean, there are just so many tangents I could take here, but okay. So when I was in California and this happened last year, my friend, she is from Mexico and her family still lives in Mexico city. So when I took the ivermectin, I discovered, yes, I have a parasite infection. So then I went to an infectious disease doctor. She tested me. I even put an actual worm in the sample vial and they still came back and told me it was negative, which now I've learned they actually have very unsophisticated parasite tests in hospital labs, which is really sad uh, because so many people's infections go um, un, how do you say, verified. And, hi, hon. I'm taking a dog sleeping. Okay, bye. Um, and anyway, my point is, my doctor there described albendazole. Then she tells me, which I had already read, so she confirms it, that albendazole was a medication, a parasite medication that had been on the drug repurposing list. What is that? That is when they take a drug that's been verified for a certain purpose and then they repurpose it to another illness. So what was that repurposing? Cancer treatment. So she says, I don't know if you can find this medication here in the US anymore, and if you can, it'll probably be very expensive. It took us two weeks of trying different pharmacies to try and find albendazole. Meanwhile, my friend from Mexico City, I texted her and said, this is the medication I'm looking for. Can you look in your um, local drugstore? And she was like, oh yeah, I know that medication. We take that every six months here in Mexico, whether you're a child or an adult. And I was like, what? And she goes, yeah, I can get that for you. How many pills do you want? And I'm thinking to myself, oh, maybe 20. I should have told her 100 because little did I know how much it was gonna cost. Meanwhile, the very next day, oh, oh, oh. Anyway, I told her I want 20. Do you know how much they cost? 20 bucks, 20 bucks for 20 pills. Okay, meanwhile, the drugstore finally calls me and says we can get albendazole for you, but it's gonna be 
costly. And I'm like, how much could it be? I just found it for $21 a pill, 20 bucks for 20 pills. Of course, I didn't tell them that. And um, they said, yeah, we can fill your prescription of 20 pills. It'll be $5,000. Think about that, you guys. What in the heck? So now I do further research and I find this guy named Joe Tippins. He had a metastasized cancer to 50 different areas of his body. It started as a lung cancer. And his vet friend had been doing a research study somewhere out in the Midwest. And he was using a med called fenbendazole. Notice the similarity, fenbendazole, albendazole. They're from the same family. It's called azoli. And um, he said, use fenbendazole to treat your cancer. Have any of you guys heard of this before? Is this new information? Um, anyway, so sure enough, Joe did the fenbendazole. He took 222 milligrams a day. Plus he took vitamin E and CBD um, and maybe something else. But anyway, the fenbendazole is an incredible medication. It disrupts the energy microtubules in the cancer. It also disrupts, that's how it works on parasites. It disrupts their, basically their metabolism system and kills it. That's how it kills it. And so he took it and with he, his, his doctors had given him 12 weeks to live, you guys. He did not do the chemo and radiation. He just did the fenbendazole. Completely cleared the cancer. It is incredible. This medication is used um, for clearing mold and mildew and parasites. I mean, it is like such an incredible medication. So I take fenbendazole and reishi spore oil, which is the reishi mushroom, the king of all mushrooms, of all fungus, right? It can kill all other fungus. So anyway, I take the fenbendazole, the reishi oil, iodine, and a magnesium oxide at night. And I'm not kidding you, it has helped me feel so much better. And it's just an incredible protocol. So I'm excited for you guys to learn more about this. And if you're interested in a group, how should we run it? Let me turn your comments back on. That was my story. <laughs> Here's the other story, part of the story that I should have shared. This part's crazy too. Um, parasites have up to 10, maybe more, some, some have more, life stages. The problem with the medications and then the parasites is that they, each, like the different life stages may or may not be killed by the parasite medication and or the herb, if you're doing an herbal support. There are herbs that work as well. Um, they may or may not kill each life stage. And here's the other thing. Over a thousand species of parasites, some microscopic and some up to 40 feet long. Think about that, you guys, it's crazy. So here's the deal. If you only t kill parasites one time and then you think you're good, you're wrong. Because those that are living the in the insisted life stage might grow. <laughs> They might not might grow, they will grow eventually when the, when the environment is right for them. And so <clears throat> for me, my theory is, my body was able to handle the toxins and pathogens that I was exposed to until I got breast implants and until we had water damage in our house with mold. And so that was my tipping point. Then I became susceptible to all of the pathogens. Because remember, you're exposed to bacteria, to virus, to parasites, to all of these things all of the time every day. When your body is healthy, your detox pathways are functioning properly. Your kidneys are working properly. You're pooping twice a day. Your liver's functioning properly. Your lungs are healthy and you're breathing and exhaling and you're getting oxygen, not wearing a mask that's key, then you're going to be healthy. Now, if you're riddled with toxins and heavy metals and you're exposed to mold or you do something stupid like get breast implants, then you're effed and it's your tipping point. And if you're working with Western medicine, what are they gonna do? They might put you on a painkiller, an anti-inflammatory and or tell you it's all in your head and try and put you on a a depression or anxiety medication. Now, can I tell you something cool about anxiety as well? And there are scientific studies on this. Um, and you could actually research this. I think it was on Dr. Mercola blog. He always links to tons of research studies and all of his um, articles. So definitely 
subscribe to his blog. But um, anxiety is directly related to toxins circulating in your blood. Now, this might not be the case for 100% of the people, I won't claim it, but for me, I have noticed when I start to feel anxiety, I take a binder, it binds up with the toxins, I feel better, back to normal, and no anxiety. So that was a miracle. I didn't realize that that was the case. Um, I hit upon that last year, and any time I would feel anxiety, I would take those by that um, binder, and then I would notice I would feel better. Well, and then, it was just last month, I found this scientific study on it, and it proved it was true. Yeah, worms do react to the moon phase. Are you less sensitive to the moon now? Um, no, I am not because I still am dealing with all these toxic issues. Um, also, we still in, live in the house where we had the mold problem and I am afraid that I might be too sensitive to this house and I have still too much mold which is suppressing my immune system and I'm still susceptible to parasites. Also, I haven't taken um, something called Prozaquantil which is what the medication that addresses flukes. And I know I have flukes living in my liver because when I've done the liver flush, the liver flush is something I wanna lead you guys all in in our group. That's really interesting to do. But I saw lots of stones come out and flukes come out. So I know I have flukes. I never have taken the Prozaquantil because I wanted to address the parasite population that were killed by the other meds first, lower the population before I address the flukes because killing flukes is really hard on the body and hard on the liver. And so you have to be systematic in your approach to what you kill, when you kill it, etc. So that's kind of where I'm at. Um, the problem with having parasites, you guys, is it's going to be a one to three year battle of killing them and then it's maintenance for life. That's the bad news. The good news is we know this and we'll support each other through it. Okay, that's the good news. The bad news is when I first found out I had parasites last fall, I was so embarrassed and emotionally destroyed, literally like a leper. That's how it felt. Like I couldn't, I didn't want to talk about it. Like I didn't want, it was horrendous, the feeling. So if any of you go through that and you have parasites and you start to kill them and you start to feel that, embarrassed feeling and that defeated feeling just know I've lived through it myself I call that time of my life the long dark night of the soul and I cried literally daily for two solid weeks <laughs> and I couldn't eat anything all I could do was drink a smoothie bone broth and I was literally couldn't leave my bathroom maybe every half an hour for five the first five days and then I did better the following five days, but didn't leave the house that whole time. My sister had to feed me, <laughs> it was horrible. But we went through it together, thank God. Um, how do you help and protect your children? Well, what we do is we continue, um, we continue to do all these things with our own kids. Like my kids take binders, they take glutathione, we do parasite killing over the full moon, not every single month because they don't need that often because they are quite healthy. Um, but we still do it because we have animals. They sleep with a cat, with a dog. We have horses, etc. cetera. And um, Michael, I agree with you. Ozone RI, which is also known as rectal insufflation, um, is when you, it will put the ozone gas up the rectum. It gets absorbed. It super oxygenates the colon and then as a result, the liver. And it does kill flukes. Now, right now I'm not addressing any parasites because I'm taking a specific test my doctor wanted me to take tomorrow called a periomics, where they look for the DNA of every existing known pathogen to man. Bacteria, virus, parasites, fungus, and... Um, it's pretty, this is going to be pretty cool. So I take that test either tomorrow or the next day. It's a stool test and then a urine test. Anyway, did we decide what kind of group we're doing? Is it a Telegram group or on Facebook? I don't know. Facebook does censor this, these types of topics. That's my only concern here. So I'm going to leave it at that. So if you have ideas where we can discuss this in a deeper in a deeper dive, let me know. I have so I have hundreds of resources saved in the notes on my phone, and my plan is just to keep uploading resources and sharing this information with you all so that you can dive in and be your own best doctor, right? So, love you. Take care. I gotta go to my appointment now. Okay, talk soon. Thanks for tuning in. I hope this has been helpful. Um, I love it. People are like, call it the book club. <laughs> I know. I want to call, I will call it some weird name. But the thing is, if you're even typing ivermectin or fenben or these words, even in a post or comments, they flag it. 
And they already have their AI set up to target me and shadow ban me, so I don't know where that leaves us, but let's um, do a little research. Let's find this out together. And like I said, I wanna support you because going through this alone really sucks. And some people lose their minds because their doctors don't validate them. And, and like I said, the Western medicine doesn't, they don't believe we have parasites in this country, so. We do, I'm sorry to say it, and it could be your root cause, your problem. But now I might be able to point you in the right direction and help you get better. So love you, thanks for tuning in, bye. Also, was this helpful? Looks like my diehards are here, so thanks for tuning in today. If you made it to the end, type end, bye. Ooh, Dana, good idea, we could do that. All right, we'll discuss that further next time.